All right, everyone out there in Banjo Land, Mike heading here. I had a request from someone in the audience if I could do another lesson about how to use your capo and more specifically, what specific capo positions are used for playing in different keys. So I'm gonna show you how to play in all 12 keys using your capo and we're gonna use three positions, the playing out of G, playing out of C, and playing out of D, very common. So you can play in all 12 keys without your capo as well, but why would you want to use your capo? So the capo is going to allow you to basically harness the knowledge that you already have in another key. So let's say I know a couple licks in the key of G. I can use my capo to play those licks in, you know, A flat, A, B flat, B. Whereas if I didn't play with a capo, I would have to learn all those licks separately, where with a capo, they basically all become the same lick in the key of G. So that's what we're gonna talk about for this lesson. Capos are used all the time in bluegrass, so they're a big part of the sound. Um, the other thing you might not be able to see, but I have railroad spikes here that I can spike my fifth string with, what we'll talk about. You can either get those installed or you can use a fifth string capo. I have another lesson called Capo Tips and Tricks that goes more into depth about like the placement of the specific capo and tips about how to put on the capo. So check out that lesson if you need some uh, tips installing the capo or moving the capo. But for this lesson, we're gonna focus on more about how to play in different keys using the capo. All right, let's jump in. So the first thing we wanna do is figure out what key the song is in because that's gonna help us figure out where's the best spot to either put the capo or play without the capo. So you can ask someone in the jam session what key the song is in. You can look at, if you have a tab, you know, a lot of times the chord that the song starts with or ends with usually will be the, the key that the song is in. You won't always know, but with, with practice too, you can practice listening to hear what, what key the song is in. But the best thing to do, I think, is just ask someone or look up the chords and a lot of times the key of the song will be listed. So that's the first thing we wanna do. You've probably played in the key of G before if you know some songs. So let's go over the common chords in the key of G. We have G, we're gonna use C, we're gonna use D, and then a fourth chord that will be very common is E minor. Okay, so with those four chords, you could play a ton of songs in the key of G. So G, C, D, and E minor. And there's multiple ways to play all four of those chords, and we won't go into that in this lesson. But just remember, you could basically mix those chords up in a whole bunch of different ways to create a whole bunch of different songs, okay? So another really common key that we're going to look at for capo positions is playing in C. Okay, so this time our four common chords are now C, F, G, and A minor. Okay, so you notice that the C and the G are also used in the key of C and they're used in the key of G, right? So this can be confusing for students because the same two chords might be used and if the song is in the key of G, it's gonna work differently than if the song is in the key of C. Okay, so remember, in the key of C, even though the C and the G chord are also in the key of C, now our root chord is C. So all of our chords are basically pulling back to a C this time, rather than a G, like in the key of G. So remember, the, that's why it's really important to figure out what key the song is in first because just because a song has a C and a G in it, for example, doesn't necessarily mean it's in the key of G. It could also be in the key of C. So that's really important to remember. So C, F, G, and A minors. And then again, always go back to your root chord, C. I think that helps you. It also helps you kind of remember it in, with your ear if you hear that, how it resolves back to the home chord. Okay, so those would be the first two I would start with. I would start by learning to play in G, which if you're a beginner, you probably already know. You might know a few things in C, but you might not have played any songs now in the key of C, which would be good practice for you. And then if you want one more, we're now gonna play in the key of D. So if we use these three positions, we can play in all 12 keys. So D, we'll have D, 
You can do a three finger D, you can do a two finger D, you can do a four finger D, that doesn't matter. Don't do, don't do D7 for this one, let's just do regular D. So we got D, and then we have G, so, and then we have A, and then the fourth chord is B minor. So I'm just going to do the top three strings, the fourth fret third string, third fret second string, and fourth fret first string. You could also get this low fourth fret if you wanted to, but I usually don't. I just play the top three strings. That's B minor. So we have D, G, A, B minor, and then back to D. Okay? So you could... Let's, again, we'll start without a capo, so that would be one easy way to play in the key of G, the key of C, and the key of D. You could do, you know, G, C, D, E minor, G, let's do it twice. So that'd be a, one progression in the key of G. You could, again, take those four chords and mix them up or take the song that you're working on and use those chords. And again, you, probably most of the songs you know in the key of G are going to use those four chords. G, C, D, and E minor. Let's do the same thing now in C. So we got C, F, G, A minor. I'm just doing like a four diverse roll. C, Again, you can mix them up in any order. Add the A minor. Let's try in D real quick. G. A. B minor. D. G. A. B minor. D. Okay, so... You can, again, you can take these same chords and move them all around wherever you know those chords. And we'll talk about that more as we move the capo. Because remember, you're going to learn your, your chords relative to your capo, but it's also important to know the real chords. And that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, so now we've got our three positions down. So that would be an easy way to play in the key of G, the key of C, and the key of D. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our capo on the first fret. So let's... And... We won't use this one actually very often, but I want to show you how to do it just so we cover all 12 keys. So this will cover the keys of A flat, D flat, and E flat. So you're probably not going to use those too much in, in bluegrass. Also, the same chords are G sharp, C sharp, and D sharp. So A flat and D sharp are pretty much the same thing. And so let me grab my, my tuner really quick as well. So the other thing I'm going to do here is I don't have a spike at the 6th fret. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spike up to A and then I'm going to tune down. So this one, again, it takes a little takes a little practice and, or time to get into this tuning as well. Alright, so take a second to get into that tuning. So again, I put my capo on the 1st fret. I spiked up to the 7th fret and then tuned down a half step. You can tune the octaves or at the 5th fret. So now I'm in the key of A flat if I'm thinking in G. So all my licks become the same. So I'm still going to count up if I want to do like my 2-5 slide. I pretend that this is now my 0. So I count up 1, 2, and then I would slide to 5. So 2, 3, 4, 5. So that can be a little confusing. And remember, it's also important to know the real chords if you move up the neck. So the real chords are A flat, D flat, 
E flat and F minor. Okay? So I won't go over all of them, but just remember it's important to know the real chords as well. So A flat, D flat, E flat, and F minor. Okay? So now let's think of the key of C. This again, you probably won't use this too often, but this would be the key of D flat. So or C sharp. So we've got our F chord relative to our capo. So that's really an F sharp. Our G is really a G sharp. Okay? And then we got C. And then we have, um, what is that? A sharp minor or B flat minor. Okay? Again, I'm just thinking relative to my capo. So I'm, I got my C position down. If you want to do those chords up here, it'd be. And the minor would be right here. Okay, let's look at D. Again, you won't use these too often, but that would be E flat. So you got E flat, you got A flat, you got B flat, and we've got C minor. Okay, and remember, I'm thinking, I'm thinking D, G, A, B minor. So I always say in my lessons, it's important to know the real chords, right? Because if you start playing with a bass player or a violin player or a mandolin, someone without a capo, and you yell out D, you know, and you've got your capo on one, it's, it's going to sound really bad because, you know, the, the real chord is E flat. So remember, it's good to know the, the capo chords and the real chord. So again, when I think when I say think D, G, A, and B minor, I'm thinking in capo chords. When I say E flat, A flat, uh, what would that be? B flat, C minor. It's good practice too to, to, to try and keep all these in your head and transpose in your head. But that's what we're doing there, okay? So that, that'd be like thinking in the key of D, but we're really now in E flat, right? Okay, let's move our capo up to two. Okay, so capo two is really common. Capo two is used for A, D, and E. So a really common chord. So in the key of, in capo two, if we're thinking in G, we have, we have A, we have D, E, and F sharp minor. Again, that'd be thinking in G, capo 2. A lot of fiddle tunes use capo 2. Works really good for fiddles and mandolins. So I'll use capo 2 for songs like Salt Creek, Cherokee Shuffle, really common. So we learned how to play in D without a capo, but another way to play in D is now capo 2, and we're playing in the key of C. So our chords are all the same. Now our C is really a D, our F is really a G, our G becomes an A, and our A becomes a B minor. So it's just another way to play in D, is you could capo up two and play out a C. Because now I can use all my C licks that I know. And lastly, capo two, if you want to play in the key of E, we can play out a D position. So our D is really an E, our G becomes an A, our A becomes a B, and our B minor becomes C sharp minor. Again, it's important to know the real chords because if you move up here, you know, you can think all the way up here relative to your capo, but I've, I've found for me, it's just at, when you get high enough up the neck, it's important to know the real chord. So E, A, B, and C sharp minor, okay? So capo three will cover B flat, another way to play an E flat, and what would this be F, right? So we got B flat. So I'm thinking in G position, remember. Our 
chords are now B flat, E flat, F, and G minor. So again, you probably won't use this one too much, but if you want to play out of the key of E flat, another way is capo three and play out of C. So we got E flat, our F is now A flat, we got B flat, and our A minor is C sharp minor, or C minor, excuse me, C minor. That's another way to play in the key of E flat. Here's one I use a lot, playing out of capo three and then playing out a D position. Like this is also something that is done on guitar a lot. Like Tony Rice would capo three and play out a D, like a Blue Railroad train or something like that. So this is another really common one. You can do like bluesy stuff in F. Our G becomes a B flat, our A is now a C, and our B minor is a D minor. So we have F, B flat, C, and D minor. Okay, let's move up. We're almost done. Let's move up one more, capo four. I'm moving my fifth string up. So this will cover B. So now our G position is for playing out a B. This is really common in bluegrass. Our C is now an E. Our D is F sharp. Okay? So we got, and then our, our E minor is G sharp minor. And I definitely don't expect you to remember all these right in this one lesson. But this lesson can be used as a reference, and I'll include a capo cheat sheet too, so that you can remember all the, the chords and the, the capo chords and the real chords, okay? So, and then if we want to play out, another way to play out of E is capo four and playing out of C. So again, the chords are, are E, A, B, and C sharp minor. And lastly, you probably won't use this one too much either, but D, but playing out of D, capo four is F sharp. You got F sharp, you got B, your A is a C sharp, and then you've got D sharp minor. So again, you probably won't use this one too much either, but it's just good to, to remember. Again, I'm just thinking in the key of D, and I'm using my same positions. Okay? So one more thing, again, that's that covers up to the fourth fret. One more thing I might do, and I need a different capo for this, so I'm gonna grab my shove capo. And I'll I rarely go up to the fifth fret, but this you can do this as well. So I, I like I use this style capo because then I go from under where the other one kind of goes over. So if I capo up five and now I'm in G, that's another way to play out of the key of C actually. So uh, guys like, I think Kenny Ingram did this a lot, and Rhonda Vincent. A lot of blue, uh, kind of down south bluegrass guys will do this, and guys and gals. I think that's how Jim Mills played uh, Rawhide in Ricky Skaggs Band, super fast. Again, you can play now all your bluegrass licks in G. but now we're in the key of C. So I won't do that too often. Our C would be, what would that be, an F. So that'd be another way to play an F. So we'd have, oh, oops, let's go over the chords. And again, the chords in C would be C, F, uh, G, and A minor. Our capo chords are G, C, D, and E minor. Okay, last, last two, uh, we got F, we got our, our F is now becomes a B flat, our G becomes a C, and our A minor becomes a D minor. And then this would be another way to play out a G, which I would almost never do, but capo five out of D would be back in G. So we have G, C, D, and E minor. Okay, hopefully that gives you a whole bunch of spots to, to play and try your different capo. That covers all 12 keys. What I would do is focus on the ones that you're actually playing in the most, you know, G, A, C, and D. But 
remember you can use those different positions to think about different spots to put your capo and it's also really good practice to think in the key of c or or, or the key of d if you have only thought in the key of g up until this point it's really good to start looking at the banjo from a different perspective it's really easy to always look at the banjo from the key of g which we're tuned to so again it's natural to look at everything through the key of g but real life music and real life jam sessions aren't always going to revolve around the key of g even though us banjo players would really love that it's really important to learn how to play with the capo and move it around because you, you can harness all your knowledge in the key of g and apply it to other keys all right hopefully that helps you out all right good luck